I'm Jasmine Harmon, and I've lived with my mother's compulsive hoarding all my life. I'm telling you, I'm keeping those. If that isn't with your agreement, then we have to fall out. With help, my mum's made huge improvements, and now I want to help other hoarders around the country who are living in terrible conditions. I'm feeling desperate because I can't cope with it. This isn't me. Uh, this isn't me living like this. I am shocked. It's literally a wall of stuff. These are people who have lost their homes and lives to hoarding. It's going to feel like you can't make it, and that's totally normal. Oh, yes. Do you want to spend no, the rest no. of your years with this hanging over you? Sorry, I can't do it. I want hoarders up and down the country to realise they aren't alone. Get rid. You can't well, use them, so that's a good yeah. decision you've made. I'm really mm. proud of you. Oh. And that with the right help, their lives can improve too. Really good to have my space back. Look what I have found. The things that I've found that I never actually knew that I had. <laughs> <laughs> I've got something wrong with me, which lots of other people have got, and uh, it can be cured. According to the Institute of Psychiatry, as many as 1 in 20 people in the UK are hoarders, and many of them are suffering in secrecy. Jeff lives in Plymouth. If you saw him on the street, you'd think he was a perfectly ordinary 79-year-old. But behind his front door, it's a very different story. The situation has certainly taken over my life to the extent that I have a sort of dual personality of the me inside the house and the me outside the house, uh, where I behave as though the house is quite normal. Precisely like a secret life. Jeff had maintained that secret life for 20 years. Until a few weeks ago. A bus driver came by and saw a lot of flies in the window. He then told the police. And the police thought, ooh, how's the inmate of the house died? And so they came along and banged on the door and there wasn't anybody there. And obviously I wasn't dead. So they then told the uh, council. The council told me about Jeff's story. Their environmental health officer has issued Jeff with a 42-day order to clear his hoard. His secret is out. And now he's been forced into a corner. Clear or be cleared. I can totally understand why Jeff keeps his hoarding secret. And, you know, I kept my mum's hoarding, the whole family kept it a secret for years because we were totally ashamed. I really hope that maybe through me telling Jeff about my experiences, that he might also find the courage to open up to some of his friends or family. By keeping it a secret, he's taking the whole burden, all the weight of all that hoard, on his shoulders alone. Well, impressed. yeah, people do, you know. It's, uh, I know, it's one of Since my... uh, they've been invented about a hundred years. Nice to meet and you. Be... Oh. Jeff has made a start clearing, but after five weeks, he's barely scraped the surface. So what kind of things do you collect, Jeff? The things I collect tend to be things with lots of shiny knobs. I've got a variety of microscopes. I've got a uh, ultraviolet microscope. So I mean, basically, my interests are enhancement of human capabilities. 
So do you think there are benefits to having all the stuff that you've got? Well, it's shades of grey. It's shades of grey. And how do you, does the prospect of other people knowing about this, how does that make you feel? Um, it makes it me feel so un unpleasant that I just don't think about it. Maybe I can reassure you a little bit mm -hmm. because with my mum's hoarding, we went to great lengths to hide it from the outside world because we were ashamed and people just didn't understand. And eventually when we opened up with it, we were incredibly heartened actually to find out how many other people were in similar situations. We thought it was just us. Do you have any other family and friends that... I've got my sister. Your sister. Who I think requires the praise for putting up with me. Has your sister been to the house? Has she been to visit you no. here? She's one of the ones who I'm trying to conceal it from. Jeff's hoard has spread across all three floors of his house. Three bedrooms, a loft, and two large rooms downstairs, all rendered useless. When's the last time you were able to sit down in here? Well, uh, I don't think I ever have sat down in here. Having lived in this house for 25 years, you have never been able to sit down and relax in your front room. That's right. How far does that go through? I can only sort of glimpse. All the way. But you can't even see the size of the room. Well, you see the, the food museum. If I'm doing well, it's a tin a day. Tin a day keeps the council away. Oh dear. Oh dear. What's that room? That's the bathroom. When the bath were you able to use work. it last? But About eight years. <laughs> Jeff, you practically have to do the splits to get through here. Well, there you are, you see. People pay good money to go to health clubs. <laughs> You're getting this for nothing. <laughs> what I think we should do, Jeff, is try and formulate some kind of plan as to how we tackle what you want to do in the house. Well, my plan is to try to make it to the back wall of that room downstairs. That will allow me to get at a variety of computer magazines which are, must be 10 years old. They can be flung. My worry about doing it in a very small space and doing it bit by bit is that it's very slow. One thing that we did with Mum was a warehouse where we took a load of stuff and it gave us space to sort. With what you've got to do, the task is pretty monumental. It makes me sad to think that he's been living like this for a long time. And the fact that he's got no one, I just think, God, how tragic that he's got to this stage. It's unimaginable, really. Basically, I wouldn't have believed it. I mean, Jasmine knew where I was coming from. It appears that I've got something wrong with me, which lots of other people have got. I'm no longer the unique me. Hoarding is a condition that takes control of people's lives. Jeff's hoard has forced him to live a life of shame and secrecy. Jean's hoard is preventing her from even living in her East London flat. She moved out of her flat and in with a friend after a health scare. Now Jean wants to move back in. Heavens above. But she can barely get in the front door. Like Jeff, Jean's hoard has reached the attention of the local council, who are concerned that it's a fire risk. Once this gets cleared here, hopefully be able to get through. Oh, 
sugar. Jean's daughter, Jeanette, made contact with me in the hope that I may be able to help her mum clear her hoard before the council do it for her. Jean wants our first meeting to be away from the flat. Your flat is inaccessible at the moment. Or you can get into the hall. Just get into That's the hall. All. And so, does that upset you or worry you or how do you feel about it? Yes, it does worry and upset. This is like a bad dream, you know? My daughter lives in Scotland and um, I used to travel to Scotland on my own every year. Now it's a bit of a, a daunting thought. Mm. So with the flat being full up with stuff, mm that's all a bit disorganised. Yes. What do you want to do about that? Well, I'm going to sort it. Mm. It's not rubbish. Mm. It's not for the dustbin. Jean's 69. She's had a tough life. She brought up her daughter, Jeanette, as a single mum, holding down up to four jobs at once to pay the way. When's the last time you had anyone round here? Pardon? When's the last time you had anyone come to your flat? Can't remember. Yeah, I've got a, something that's breakable in here, so I don't really want to leave that there. It's somewhere safe, Pardon? doesn't it? Yeah. Put it round here. Do you mind if I peek round the door? No, fine. This is the house that Jack built. This is the house that Jean mapped up. I um, wonder if I move this stuff out of the corner, no. I can go into that oh. corner and shut the door and then I can oh. move those bags from behind the door so yeah. we can open okay. it. Go on what then. do you think? Oh um, yeah, let me take that first. Yeah. It didn't happen. Are all the rooms filled up like this so not you can't as, get in? Not quite as bad, but they're not good. <sighs> um, oh my God. I am absolutely shocked at the state. I didn't think it was as bad as it is, but it is. The situation is bad. Jean's so consumed by her hoard that it's preventing her from visiting her daughter, although they do talk every day on the phone. Want to have a word with her? Yeah, I'd love to talk to her, actually. Hi, Jeanette. The moment, just talking to your mum this morning, it feels to me like she hasn't really accepted that the, the problem is as serious as it actually is. I still think that's the case, yes. Yeah. She has an idea that you can organise what's there. Mm. And I've said to her time and time again, it's not possible. I totally know what you've been through with this and I imagine it can't be easy at all being away. Many sleepless nights. Yeah, it's a big worry. I can put that in there, can't I? It's good to speak to Jeanette. I can relate to everything that she's been trying to do for her mum and how frustrating it is. I don't think that Jean is ready to let go of anything, but there's too much stuff in this flat. She's in denial. There's no other way of putting it. With Jeff's 42-day deadline looming, we need to start clearing. But Jeff has become so used to living with his hoard that I'm not sure how ready to clear he really is. This is more or less as comfortable as comfortable can be. And I, th I think, well, supposing I was an Edwardian millionaire in a stately home, it wouldn't be any more comfy. And certainly, he wouldn't have anywhere near as good a bedside lamp. Jeff has agreed to let me move the contents of the ground floor to a local warehouse. Heather Matuozzo 
a professional declutterer who works extensively with hoarders, is going to help me clear. Entre. I'll step into here so you can come up. Where am I going? And then? see. So, what you've got in here is the bathroom. You've the bath is temporarily bedrooms. full of shoes. <laughs> what did you say? What's full of shoes? The bath. I'm hoping by moving Jeff's possessions away from his home, he'll feel more able to part with them. That's an FM receiving aerial, three element, which I was intending to use for getting uh, French radio stations to improve my French. Letting go is not going to be easy, but Jeff understands that something's got to give. I mean, basically, do I want to get my place sorted out or not? Or am I going to run a museum for 20-year-old magazines uh, with a request in my will that they be cremated with me, which would present a real, a real problem to the crematorium? As well as giving Jeff the chance to really sort through his possessions, clearing the hoard from his house should also buy him some time with the council. I can see intellectually that it is a very good idea, but then of course there's the thing, other, other people are laying their germ-infested, sacrilegious hands on all my precious belongings. I mean, at some point he will have to face up to it and do it himself and do the letting go. But I think he, we're slightly pushing him out of his comfort zone. This stuff sorted here. Semi-sorted. Semi-sorted. I do want to hang on to those. Oh dear. Jeff's hoard is unique. Scientific machines, antique music rolls, and a vast collection of tins he calls his food museum. I just want you to look at the food museum. Mm -hmm. I don't oh, well, want you to eat it. A lot of it's okay. Do you know how old it is? Have a guess. Have a guess. I think probably about eight years. More. It doesn't matter. I mean, basically, it was cheap because it was dented, not it's cheap because It's 16 it... years old. Yeah, but you see, my logical, logical mind says there isn't anything wrong with them. If there was any doubt about it, first of all, it would go thud, thud, thud when you shook it. This doesn't. It makes the right noise. Secondly, that would be slightly conve con convex. Mm. It's not. So there's no way I could persuade you to... Not really, ...reduce no. your food museum no, my, a bit? No, No. Oh. His fridge freezer is even more disturbing. It's been hidden in his hoard for years and years, the whole time switched on. Oh, that's it. What was in that jug? I don't know, but it's perfectly a good jug. In my experience, hoarders have a very different relationship with their possessions. Where we might see junk, Jeff sees treasure. Was that hard for you to let that stuff go out of the house that we've put in the car? Yes. I think certainly it is a it is a somewhat, somewhat traumatic thing to see the things going out of the door. It was a bit like uh, uh, having a sort of important part of my genitals taken away. <laughs> that sort of feeling. That's how it feels. Yes. You know, I'm sorry that it feels painful, but I think you're amazingly brave. What will be interesting to see is that whether having that extra bit of space, how that balances out against losing that part of you. In no way was this easy for Jeff, even though he's outwardly joking about it. He's got this inner turmoil that's going on, but he's gonna let it go because he knows it's for the greater good. The actual feelings are a sort of uh, being violated in a small way. 
it's hard because it's my possessions. But I think probably the real reason is much more deep in the subconscious than that. Jeff has done remarkably well so far, but if he's going to get to the root of his problem, he'll need other help. I've asked Professor Paul Salkowskis, one of Britain's leading hoarding experts, to talk to Jeff. Jeff is incredibly intelligent, charming. It would be easy to look at Jeff and go, he's fine, he's sorted. But he's not, he's totally not. There's uh, a lot going on beneath the surface. Do you know what the, you know, the technical definition of uh, hoarding is? No. It's, it's actually when, when your possessions, when the, the things you put in, in space prevent the space from being used for the purpose it would normally be used for. And so the problem, in a sense, that part of the definition of the problem is that it, that it stops you doing really important things and stops you living in your house. The really. important things to you. Yeah. Jeff was born in 1933 in Nottinghamshire. His mother was a secretary and his father ran a local printing department. You were only child, or we had brothers and sisters? I had a, a sister when I was seven. Mm -hmm. When you were much younger, so perhaps when you were a child, was there, was there a shortage of money? Uh, I had, when, uh, up to 1939, I think I was bought a fair collection of expensive toys. Did you play with them a lot? I think so, yes, but my mother used to chuck him out when the paint was a bit damaged. So what were you left with? Not very many. Yeah. Just talking about your childhood in general. I was lonely. So oh, nice. occasionally I used to go off to other kids' houses. I viewed these with amazement because they always looked as though I bombed them. You know, the kids' toys all over everywhere. The houses we lived in, but our house uh, was perfect. That's right. And it is logical to say, well... Go, go, with, go with your heart rather than your head, actually. I, 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 I'm, I can't. The logic, the logic is... My heart's walled off. I think you are very detached from your feelings. You're the, you're the boy who grew up in the perfect house, yeah. And here you are now. And somewhere between the two. Very opposite. Yeah, the very opposite. This is almost an anti home, isn't it? Hmm. Jeff worked for many years as a chemical engineer. In 1966, he got married. He was 33 years old. 18 years later, the marriage ended in divorce. Since then, Jeff has lost contact with his two children. Around the age of 50, you lose your house, you yeah. lose your wife, so, you, so uh, actually, uh, you lost everything. To a first approximation, yes. There's a number of ways in which I think you've been damaged. You probably don't have to be a rocket scientist or even a chemical engineer to work out that there might possibly be a link there. A link with hoarding, you mean, or yeah. a link... A link with this, with this, with what, what's around you. This is a horrible way for you to live, and that's what, what I said to you early on. It's upsetting. Mm. It's upsetting mm. to, to see how you have mm. to live. I wish Jeff would be able to open up a little bit to himself, sort it out before it's too late. I can't think of anything worse than him living out the rest of his days in a semi-derelict house, full up with stuff on his own. Jeff has gone to great lengths to keep his hoarding a secret from his friends and family. 
but not all hoarders are able to conceal it from those close to them. Okay. Okay. <laughs> right. Jean's daughter Jeanette oh. is well aware of her mum's condition. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. Yes. And she's awful. becoming increasingly worried. It's obsessing. Yeah. Um, there's all sorts of emotions. There's you're upset, obviously, for your mum. Um, you feel guilty because you think you should have done more, and yet at the same time, you know you've actually tried quite hard. So. You know. Mug or a cup? They're all clean, but it's where That's they are. Where boiled. are they? Yeah, I know, I put it on. They're all clean, but where are they? Yes. Like me yeah. with my mum, Jeanette's been trying for years to help her mother overcome her hoard. Have a sort out of this. And... I'm looking forward to meeting Jeanette because she has been in a similar situation to me. Okay. Now where's the coffee? quite true. Where's the coffee? It's around. I mean, I know from experience with my own mum that it feels like it's never-ending at times. You feel like you're getting nowhere. Doors closing. Jean visits her flat almost every day to try to sort through her hoard so she can move back in. Hello! But she's not making any headway, and with the threat of a council Hello. clearance hanging over her, it's causing great anxiety. Hello. I mean, we're, we're right at the beginning of this now. It's not going to be an instant fix, as you know. Yeah, know. It, it, it will take a long time and it will be an ongoing process. What would you hope to achieve? What would be your long-term goal, Jean? Peace of mind. I'd like to have more of the stuff put in its right place because none of this is in the place it should be. Jean dates the chaos back to when her belongings were moved by the council from one flat to another, following a fire in the block. But Jeanette told me her mother's hoarding was just as bad in her previous flat. I think we need to clear some space in the living room today. Mm. Yeah, would that, mm. would that be a good step that for you, That would be a good step, yeah. mm. Heather has joined us to try to get things moving. If, if, we, if we form a human chain mm. up the corridor, Pass some of that stuff out. Would that well, be OK? I'd prefer the stuff to go just in the doorway of the kitchen rather than in the hallway. Isn't because enough space, Mum? Isn't there? You no. don't know. Do you think, then, in, in all that stuff there, we aren't going to find repeats of things that you have? No, I don't think you are. And the, 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 you don't feel ready to let go of anything yet? Not yet, no. Jean is resistant to letting go, a resistance Jeanette is all too familiar with. Do you feel happy with how it's going today? Or do you think we should be doing anything slightly differently to, to adapt to your mum? I think you're doing really well. She's very difficult. <laughs> she'd say so herself, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Kitchen. Kitchen. Mm. Have you ever, like, tried to help her clearing out with her being there in the past? Oh, yeah, in the past I've had to, but it's never been very successful. Mm. Um, it always felt like a battle. And that was probably inevitable because, because it was just me. I had a limited amount of time. I had a huge wall of stuff to deal with and a mum that didn't want to get rid of anything. Does it make you feel resentful in a way that this stuff has sort of taken over? Or is it...? Yeah. yeah. That's not me blaming my mum. No. That's just not wishing that it had not happened. Yeah. Must be a lot of weight on your shoulders, having Yeah. This is the first time I've ever shared it. Oh. It actually really makes me sad. That one and that one, could they go? I don't know yet. But you can take that one. OK. That's it. OK. Thank you. Can I take four no, out of ten? No, no, I can't. Why? Sorry, because I want to hang on to it for a while. Do you feel happy with those bits that you've selected going to the charity shop? That's fine. Can we just put a few more things in here just no. to pad it out? It's not no. bulging enough. No, that's fine, as it is. After six hours' work, 
we've managed to clear some space in the living room, but Jean has only let five items leave the flat. Those bits? Yeah, we'll fine. Take to the yeah. charity shop. OK. Well done, Jean. Right, that's all right. So you Sorry, there's not more, but there might be no. more next time. Well, exactly. Yeah, yeah. OK, then. I think today was really, really hard for Jean. It may only seem like a small step, but for Jean, I think it may be quite monumental. Because Jeanette's an only child, the whole weight of it has been on her shoulders. It was just her and her mum. But when it's your mum, you can't ever turn your back on her. Thank you. Hey. Well, that's amazing, isn't it, actually, it to be is, able to yeah. sit like this in here yeah. after... Yeah. There's still a lot to sort through. Yeah, but, I do know yeah. that. So what am I going to do? Take up bowls? I could have a rifle range, or I could do experiments. I could measure the velocity and the speed of light. It's taken a week to clear the downstairs of Jeff's house into a local warehouse. Everything bar his food museum, which he's refused to budge. In the process of clearing, he's come across some old treasures. There is my father's top hat. And uh, so it fits me. He's also found some unwanted guests. Oh dear. I can't afford a vet to do a proper autopsy, but I think it's food poisoning. The council's 42-day notice has expired, but as there's been visible progress, he's been granted a stay of execution. Basically, the council are gobsmacked. I think I'm now in the situation I can say, look, do you really want to carry on with this clearance notice threat? Despite Jeff's optimism, they won't let him off the hook that easily. Right now, his hoard is being held in a local warehouse. What he can't let go will end up back home. Oh my gosh, there's so much stuff. This is actually only from two rooms in Jeff's house and it's filling this entire space. Maybe seeing it all laid out like this will make him realise that actually there's too much stuff, even if it was all organised. You know, just the pianola rolls would fill it at more than an entire room. Today will be the first time Jeff has seen his possessions since they left his house. I think this is going to be quite difficult for Jeff. I think he's been putting off and putting off and putting off. And I think he's going to go through the same emotions that my mum went through. It's like ripping off an arm or a leg. That's what it feels like. Hi, Jeff. Hi. Come in. Righto. How are you? Oh, all right, thank you. Considering, you know. Come and have a look. There is a lot, isn't there? Jeff has got some difficult decisions to make about what he keeps and what he lets go, including the 1,000 music rolls. They play on an antique self-playing piano called a pianola, a device Jeff doesn't even own. This is going to be the, the easy place to start, isn't it? Hmm. There's a, look at all those. I might even hang on to that, I'm not sure. That's a super thing if it works. And that go. Oh no, I need, I need, I definitely need that because at the present moment I've shorted them. That's okay for tools, you see. It's, it's actually, though it looks a bit fly blown, it's actually perfectly good. Really? I remember the sewing machine, I got it for two pounds. Does it work? I think so. If it doesn't work, I'll mend it. And that's a cushion. I think it's probably worth keeping. 
Uh, now, just a moment. Those, those are television aerials, aren't they? Mm-hmm. Oh, I need one of them. <sighs> right. There is always going to be a sort of compulsion to go back to the way that you have lived. It's a habit. <gasps> is that more pianola rolls? Oh yes, I sort of, I appear to have lost control on pi pianola rolls. You've got a lot and no pianola. Well, I had 14. When was that? Well, uh, well late, late stages of my marriage. So how long ago was that? 30 years. So what got you started collecting these, Jeff? My ex-wife also liked pianolas. It all came unstuck because of the divorce. There are always going to be certain things that push a button that he'll find it much, much more difficult to decide to let go. What, what we'll do, we'll, we'll stop because yeah. basically I'm getting to the stage when I'm not quite sure whether I'm coming or going. It's been a tough day for Jeff. So far, he's barely let go of anything. I don't want to pile any more pressure on him, so I'm taking him back to his house. Oh. Entree. Oh. <gasps> I've never actually even seen this room. I just had no idea what it was like. I hope that seeing his home clear might remind him what we're trying to achieve in the warehouse. How would you feel now if the stuff that's gone just stayed gone and never came back? Well, it, it would feel rather sad in that I'd then have to start buying pianola rolls all over again. Mm. Do you feel then, instinctively, that once the stuff that's coming back from the warehouse arrives, you will go through it or do you think it will just lead to more hoarding? Basically, if I get myself back into the hoarded up state. In some ways, it's a fate worse than death. Unlike many hoarders I've worked with, Jeff can see the hole he's dug himself into. Question is, does he have the strength to dig himself out? I don't want him to take all that stuff back. If he's going to take it all back, then it just makes the whole exercise completely pointless. Today is, is a big day. It's crunch time, really. This is the first item of many to go in the uh, to-go box, probably charity shop. OK. No. So this is your to-go box now. That's right. Good. Keep or get rid? Get rid. What do you want to do with this, Jeff? Ditch it? Ditch it, yeah. Good. Almost immediately, it seems Jeff has had a dramatic change of heart. What do you want to do with it? Get rid. I keep that one and the other one's boo-hoo. That's really good, Jeff. Hmm? Actually, you're right. Boo-hoo, you can't well, use them. So that's a good yeah. decision you've made. I'm really mm. pr proud of you. Bye-bye, <sighs> black bits of wood. You're understanding that this wood, as lovely as you perceive it to be, is not helping you. I think the ladder stabiliser can go to auction, I think, charity. Right. Whole lot charity, I think. He's just brilliant. He understands what's going on so deeply. That is a big, big part of the way towards recovery. Jeff has turned a corner. Most of his scientific machines are going to auction. There's a pile to go to the charity shop, 
and some of the horde has even made it to the skip. The last problem area is the 1,000 pianola rolls, and Jeff has had a radical rethink about them as well. So this is no good. No, well, no, it's a 65. It's a 65. You see, you need a 65. No good for you. Pianola rolls come in two formats, 65s and 88s. Jeff has decided to sacrifice the 65s in favour of the superior 88s. Let's go up. Is that...? 65. 65. 700 of Jeff's pianola rolls can now go. I, I can't tell you how happy this is making me. I know you think I'm weird, but... Well, I don't know. I mean, I'm somewhat weird myself. <laughs> He's done so well. You know, there's still a long way to go. Um, but so much is going and he just gets it. And it's like such a relief. Do you think any of that can go? No, I know it can't. Why? Because that's why it's here. But it, it's here for use. OK. I last saw Jean three weeks ago. There's been no breakthrough since then. So can that go with this? Do you do it? Please. Despite Heather's best efforts. When everything's put in the right place, do you think there will be space? I answer that with one word and that would be hopefully. It wouldn't be here otherwise. So you think it's here because it's got just got to it's find here. its place? It's here because I've gotten into such a muddle. What about this? Can this go? No. Something's gone out of sync and an exaggerated attachment has been given to something and an inability to let go. Jean has an irrational attachment to her possessions that we've so far failed to break. I need to try something else, so I've asked Dr Victoria Bream Oldfield, a clinical psychologist, to talk to Jean. I want Victoria to try to convince her that she needs to let go. You've met Jasmine now quite a few times and you know that she has your best interests at heart because of your own experiences mm. that even today maybe being able to practice making mm. making a little bit of progress and maybe kind of taking that deep breath and letting some things go with the goal of this actually being a lovely place to live where you can be free and be happy and do what you want to do rather than it being about this stuff on your mind all the time. That it's... is the real waste of time mm. and a waste of your life because you're thinking about it all the time. Mm. You can't do anything you enjoy. You can't even go and visit your daughter because you're thinking about this stuff. Mm. It has had an impact on your mm. life and what you're able to do. And there's an awful lot of things you still can do and you're extremely capable, but then you're gonna need some help with things. I don't know what I want, that's, that's the sad situation I find myself in. I don't know if I ever imagined that I would feel like this, mm. that I don't know mm. what I want. Mm. So what do you think of Victoria's suggestion about letting one item go and having a bit of a, a leap of faith and saying, OK, take, I don't know, Jerry Halliwell's yoga. I left a bit, no, left no, a bit, no, Victoria. No, 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 no. What about that? Can I take that? for safekeeping and just to experiment mm. to see how you feel letting something go. No, it's not, that won't come into it, I don't think. I'm, I'm not you and you're not me. Over the last week, how many times have you sat down and watched a DVD? Or I haven't, day? because right. things get in the way. Right, right. That, I think, says it all, that you haven't done the things you want to do. Things are physically in the way, and also they're like emotionally, mentally in the way for you, because you wake up every day with all this hanging over you. 
Up until now, Jean has only let a few items go that she didn't care about. This time, she's let me leave the flat with something she wants to keep. The point of the exercise of taking something away is hopefully for Jean to realise that it's not important and in fact she doesn't want it back because it's not helping her and hopefully if she can decide that about one thing she might be able to decide the same about others then we might start making some real progress. It's been a week since Jeff and I began sorting in the warehouse, and he's been busy working through the remainder of his hoard. We've got, I would think, at least 75% of it, either ditched or charity shop or auction. Letting go of three quarters of his hoard is a massive achievement for Jeff. Now I want to turn our attention to another aspect of his hoarding, the emotional side. He said he's built a wall around his heart and I think he just doesn't experience feelings of pain. And I think he's still punishing himself. Everyone has lots of emotion, but uh, um, different people deal with them in different ways. Now, I haven't told my sister yet about what's been happening and I am slightly dreading telling her I still have a little bit of a difficulty in coming out with something that I'm a bit ashamed of. If Jeff is going to come clean about his hoarding and share his problems with his family, there's more work to be done. He's having another session with Professor Paul Salkowskis. OK, so I'd just like, I'd like an update. I think I'm doing very, very well considering Really, the only thing that's relevant, I think, is the feeling of, mm. of being uh, violated is and the feeling of loss. So, is, is, obviously... Is, is, there a matching, is there a matching positive feeling with this lot? I don't know if it's happiness or is it... Um... I don't think there's any such thing as happiness. I think it's just the absence of misery. It's quite bleak. There's no such thing as happiness. There's no, no motivation Life is, life is bleak. We're born, we age and we die. A few bits in between. Sometimes people say happiness doesn't exist when they fear not having it. Would it be all right if we were to look at yep. the, the photos? So, I, I'm, okay. This is your family home. That's that's right. That's your mother. Yeah. Is that your yeah, mother? That's my mother. Yes. There's a lot of photographs of you. Some of these are, will have been taken by my father, you see. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> What's this? So that's my father. That's my mother. Yeah. And here's a magnificent toy. Yes. And I had the toy removed from it because I made holes in it to I ventilate know. it. Yeah. This is, these are really good, aren't mm. they? They're, I mean, what do you feel looking at this lot? Well, this is the first time I've looked at them for about 20 years, actually. Why is that? Hmm? Why is that? Well, they're basically um, not on the top of the heap. The point of those photographs, I was watching you as you were going through them, the point of those photographs was the memories. Mm. Now, I don't think they're entirely happy memories, and, and, I, and I don't think it's disconnected from this idea of, mm. of, 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 of happiness doesn't exist. But let me put it in a simpler mm. way, OK? Let's suppose that you have a six-year-old grandchild, mm -hmm. okay? And your six-year-old grandchild comes to you and says, I don't think happiness exists. Do you think that you would turn to him and say, well done, that's just exactly what you should be thinking. That is a good rule to run your life on. All right, then, I think you've, ma you've, you've made a point there. I give him. I, I, I'm just kind of, I suppose the reason I'm saying it is because you are that six-year-old boy, you were that six-year-old boy. Yes. Yeah.
it is hard to talk about that sort of thing, but I am opening up a little bit. It's been five months since I started working with Jean, and so far it's been a real struggle to get her to let go of anything. The reality is, if we can't help Jean clear her hoard, the local council will clear it for her. Yeah. Um, put your blindfolds on. Why? And we're going to be stunned by loads of space. Frustratingly, though, it's not space we find. The front room is more hoarded than ever. Just filled up again. No, it's not. Um, it's not been anything else but full. One day there'll be a miracle happen, perhaps. What would it look like if there was a miracle happen? It would be clearer, much clearer. Um, there's nothing here that's rubbish, no, or no, for chucking that. out. No, no. It's just that it's got to be sorted. Jean. Yes. Do you remember you gave me something to take away the other day? You were going to imagine that it was gone forever and see how mm. you felt. So how do you feel about that item now? Well, if I knew what it was, I might be able to give you an answer. <laughs> I think that is your answer. That's your answer. It's immaterial. What's important in life are the people. Your daughter is worried about you because you are paralysed by this stuff. I'm sad. Um, about it. It's, I go to sleep, when I wake up, it's the first thing on my mind. This might be radical, but what have you said? Guys, I know you've got my best interests at heart and you want to help me to avoid incurring costs and stress by the council taking my stuff and putting it into storage. I will trust you to do the right thing with my stuff. I trust you, but I just don't want anyone. The horrible, stark, unpleasant truth is it's either us or them. I think at the present time we've got to put stuff on hold, really. Your whole because life is on hold, Jean. You're not able to travel. You are stuck here because you can't leave until it's sorted out. It's not going to get sorted out yes, on its it own. Is. Do you want to spend no, the rest no. of your years with this hanging over you, with every no. morning you wake up and it's the first thing that you think about. The thing is, it's about six or seven words, I believe. Go for it. I've got to do it myself. Why? Because that's me. It's really hard. I'm actually struggling to try and keep a lid on everything because I feel like I've let Jeanette down. Stupid, really, but, but having been in the same situation as her for so many years with my mum, I feel like we were her last hope. It's just so tragic. I feel like we've reached a stalemate. In Plymouth, it's a very different story. Look, isn't it shiny? It's practically new. Oh, look how big it is. So, as I am at the present moment, A, where am I going to put it? B, I need it considerably less than I need a hole in the head. I think very much that I'm a recovering hoarder. In some ways, it has been as though I was in 
some sort of strange, surreal dream. I'm slowly sort of surfacing. A lot has changed in Jeff's life since we first met. I reckon uh, I'm only about 250 years behind the modern kitchen. I got a tea towel now as well. I got two of them, actually. Jeff is acclimatising to a life less hoarded. Hi, Jeff! But I want to know if he's finally had the courage to tell his family. Not looking too bad. Is this the stuff that came back from the warehouse? That's then? the stuff that came back from the warehouse. Jeff is still a hoarder, but he's come a long way. Even his food museum has been thinned out. So I've thrown out 80 tins now. You've thrown out some tins? Well, yeah, most of them have gone down there. But so, and I, you know, I mean, I'm still quite healthy. How have you been feeling emotionally? Happier? Happier. Yeah! Oh, yes. I mean, there's no... Well, I mean, I've got all sorts of options that I can do now. And have you told other people about what's going on? With very great difficulty, I told my sister. Have you? Mm. And um, somewhat to my surprise, they did not take a judgmental attitude. They haven't said, you're worse than a waste of space, you know, and what have you done this for and all the rest of it. That is absolutely wonderful. That is almost the best thing to have come out of this whole process. I think it's enormous for Jeff, the fact that he started telling people about it. It's amazing that he's told his sister what's going on. And I think he was pleasantly surprised. They were supportive. And I think that when you've been hiding something for such a long time for fear of being judged, to actually come out of the closet and to be able to talk openly, oh, it's liberating. You feel like a massive weight has gone from your shoulders. And, you know, I think that's, that's where Jeff's getting to now.